The truth of myth cannot be expressed through the language of, of, of logic. One must sing to one's God, not talk them to death. It's very sad how the modern world of science and technology has muted the ears of our children to the song of the earth and the music of our gods. The nonprofit Turtle Island Project in northern Michigan fights religious intolerance, racism, and other social issues that threaten the future of mankind. Spiritual terrorism against other people. Is there subconscious, right, imperialism? Because we have been in power for so long in the Western world that we think we own the world. We own other cultures. Among the events sponsored in 2007 by the Turtle Island Project were two concerts to raise money to fight teen suicide and domestic violence on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota, a Native American roundtable that's now an annual event, and several free seminars on numerous topics, including Celtic spirituality and centering prayer. Engage in some spiritual practices that are deeply embedded within the Christian tradition, but which we've forgotten about. The Turtle Island Project is designed to be, uh, the, the deep reason for it is um, to encourage a change in consciousness, really of all of humankind, to do our part as best we can to do that, um, to, to realize God's presence in all of creation and to encourage us to open ourselves to more profound relationship with one another, uh, with God, and with creation. The Turtle Island Project, founded in Michigan's Upper Peninsula in August 2007, is fighting exploitation of the earth, spiritual terrorism, religious imperialism, and racism against Native Americans and other indigenous peoples. Two pastors who founded the Turtle Island Project believe that mankind can learn a lot from earth-based cultures like American Indians, Celts, and others. Let's sing a song of good cheer. In December 2007, the Turtle Island Project sponsored a benefit concert for the White Buffalo Calf Woman's Society in Mission, South Dakota, the first and oldest domestic violence shelter on an American Indian reservation. Just before Christmas, a crowd gathered at the Falling Rock Cafe and Bookstore in Munising, Michigan to hear songs composed and performed by Turtle Island Project director and co-founder Dr. Lynn Hubbard. The White Buffalo Calf Woman Society was founded 30 years ago by current director Tilly Black Bear and other courageous Native women. So it is for a great cause. I started going down to South Dakota a number of years ago. I started taking uh, graduate students down there for their cross-cultural ministerial training when uh, I was studying for my doctorate in Chicago. And uh, as a result of that, uh, I've spent a lot of time on those reservations down there, and I've gotten to know quite a few really good friends of mine. One of them, Tilly Black Bear, uh, started the White Buffalo Calf Women's Shelter uh, 30 years ago. And this is the uh, oldest shelter in the United States for battered women. So this was the first, and it's still going strong. And um, I don't know if you know, the Pine Ridge and the Rosebud are the first and the third poorest counties uh, in the United States. And you really have to go down there and see it to believe it, that right at the heart of this country is this tremendous, tremendous uh, poverty. And uh, this evening here, why I'm doing this is to raise money because they're in a crisis right now. The uh, women's shelter is in Mission, South Dakota, which is uh, in, on the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota, and uh, they're having a tremendous problem now with uh, many social problems. Uh, alcoholism, which has been a traditional problem, but also methamphetamine, and most destructively now, uh, there's been over 400 uh, suicide attempts uh, by children there in the last uh, couple of years. And, and that's especially, especially sobering uh, because there's only about 20,000 people that live in the area. So these are children that are fast losing hope for a variety of reasons, and I really appreciate you all being here. Five months earlier, in August 2007, the Turtle Island Project sponsored its first concert for the White Buffalo Calf Woman's Society. 
two northern Michigan folk groups were sent to South Dakota by the Turtle Island Project. Whitewater and Duo Borealis were joined by Native American singer Roxanne Sazu of Fort Thompson, South Dakota for a concert at the Custer Lutheran Fellowship Church in Custer, South Dakota. The Native American teen suicide rate on the Rosebud Reservation is the highest in the nation. The concert triggered media coverage by several Rapid City TV stations about the teen suicide crisis at the Lakota Rosebud American Indian Reservation, where in the past two years at least 18 teens have killed themselves and nearly 500 teenagers have attempted suicide. For nearly a decade, teen suicide has been one of the biggest problems on the Rosebud Reservation. The belief right now is that, that it is at a crisis state. But in the past two years, the problem has gotten even worse. It's really impacted myself and my family. Poverty, depression, a lack of jobs, drugs, alcohol, and other social problems are among the reasons for the Rosebud teen suicides. The White Buffalo Calf Women's Society battles domestic violence, teen suicide, and sexual assault. Figures from the Rosebud Reservation alone are shocking. Over two dozen rapes were reported in 2006 and 2007. The Turtle Island Project also cares deeply about the future of planet Earth and how mankind is treating our environment. In November 2007, the Turtle Island Project held an ecumenical retreat in northern Michigan. The topics included centering prayer, jubilation, fighting for the environment, and clergy standing up for social change. Reverend Dr. George Cairns, an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ, said we humans have not been good stewards of creation. In preparation for coming up here today, I... Um I did a search on Google, good old Google, um, on uh, rate of species extinction. Have you seen the, have you always seen the inconvenient truth, the core thing about global warming? Well, that's relatively good news compared to what I came across looking on the, on the net about this issue of species extinction. Quoting research by several environment groups, Cairns said nearly 15,600 species are threatened with extinction and, over the past 500 years, humans have forced 844 species into extinction, with the exception of a few from some of those groups who remain alive only in zoos, preserves, and other man-made facilities. The UN studies were reported widely in Europe, but received little attention in the U.S. news media. The Turtle Island Project encourages clergy to become beacons for social change by speaking out about civil rights, the environment, and other social issues. I think we live in a Kairos moment. Uh, you know, and a Kairos moment um, is, um, is a time when we're called to become new beings. Um, good, good Lutheran theologian Paul Tillich ha, has said that the Kairi, the multiple Kairi uh, in history, uh, are those crises which create an opportunity for and indeed demand an existential decision by humankind. Reverend Cairns said the children of a generation or two from now are going to face a very, very difficult time. He said the environment and the gifts of nature are not something to simply be consumed. Reverend Cairns, who's chair of the Turtle Island Project, said, quote, We are in a time now when dramatic changes are happening on this planet, and it is a critical time for people of faith, religious people, to act now. In September 2007, Dr. Cairns explained the importance of centering prayer. I've been blessed to study with uh, Father Thomas Key, who's a Trappist monk, teacher, and have learned over the last 20 years of uh, regular silent meditation what a powerful tool this is. The theological emphasis in centering prayer is to open our hearts a deeper relationship with, with God and to the increased openness to the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm Greg Peterson, Turtle Island TV.